good morning or good afternoon as the case may be i am rashid ahmed with wsp consultant and i'm going to talk about digital twins this is a new ecosystem for water system simulation for some outline um, i'll give you uh, the details about uh, the transformation happened over the years. Uh, what is the definition of a digital twin? What are the drivers? How the uh, simulation models are calibrated? I'll give some example in which I was involved in developing simulation models. At the end, I'll uh, summarize with some key uh, takeaways. So this table uh, shows the transformation over the years uh, in terms of water uh, modeling or water simulation. In uh, 1990s, uh, we had a skeletonized uh, model uh, with a steady state and limited uh, nodes. It was mostly used by consultant in master planning and fire flow determination. And then in next decade, uh, we started using all pipes model as the computer power increased, uh, the memory increased, and also the cost went down. Uh, in addition to steady state, uh, we also started running on extended period simulation. The model became more GIS compatible uh, in terms of applications. Uh, the um, model was used for identifying sampling location. It was used in design, in helping the operations and maintenance, uh, doing what if scenarios. In next decade, um, uh, we started uh, using um, model with unlimited number of nodes. Um, then the model also became more GIS integrated. Uh, the model application expanded, uh, including asset management. Uh, we started using to identify uh, water pipes for renewal and replacement. Uh, it was also used for a water loss determination, uh, different outage scenario, flushing programs. Now it is moving towards SCADA integrated continuous calibration, uh, which will be linked to the billing data, your consumption data. It will have machine learning, artificial intelligence, and we'll be moving from desktop to cloud-based. The application uh, continue to grow. Uh, we uh, are now using for pressure management, saving energy in pumping, it is becoming more real-time modeling. And then uh, we are using for a smart water solution. And after having digital twins, probably it can be used for flight simulator as well for the process or any kind of other controls. As I said that uh, this is a new area and it will not be out of place to mention that AWWA is going to have its first workshop on digital twin later this year. So it is still defining. Uh, so the definition I pulled out from uh, the Smart Water Network Forum, it says that it is a disruptive technology that provides a virtual dig digital representation of both the elements and the dynamics of water plant or system. So in other words, uh, it will have a simulation model. It will have some kind of analytics, uh, which may be machine learning, plus it will have a real-time uh, continuous calibration. In one other place, it says uh, that digital twin platform connects information technology, operational technology, and engineering technology. Uh, this is a kind of block diagram uh, they call our operational architecture. Uh, I'm calling it digital uh, twin pass version. So if uh, you look at here uh, that we have got a physical system, 
then we have got sensors uh, and then uh, data collection and then we use that data to develop physics based model it could be hydraulic model it could be a process model and then we run the simulation and then we can get a lot of what if scenarios and this information is manual the data is fed uh, manually so in future uh, the future version of digital twin will have similar uh, physical system uh, sensors uh, will have uh, data collection and sources and then uh, we'll be using data driven models as well uh, in addition to physics based model and this will give you uh, more options for running the digital twin you can get uh, what if scenarios, uh, real time uh, performance uh, uh, evaluation. Then um, you can receive the results on your mobile uh, devices. Uh, it can also generate some kind of uh, flight simulator type of things where you can simulate the process and it will have a um, secure and connected utility. So what are the drivers behind um, digital twins? First of all, as probably you know that um, um, there is a um, huge loss of water, uh, which is considered to be non-revenue water. Currently, in some cases, you will find 20 to 25 uh, percent uh, water is lost and it does not generate any revenue. So there is a lot of effort to, um, to detect uh, the leaks and uh, replace those pipes and fix those. Then uh, pump energy uh, is a big factor in terms of energy saving. Uh, there are also um, issues going on with the pressure in the system asset management uh, where you will uh, be using uh, uh, the digital twin for uh, identifying uh, the pipes, uh, the candidates for removal. Uh, sewer system, it can be used in sewer system to alert you for any kind of spill or overflows. And also uh, we have now more digital culture and digital world uh, where we need uh, instant information. So that's also one of the push for the digital twin. For the worldwide market, um, currently there are uh, more than 1500 projects, um, United States, uh, UK, Australia, Canada, Spain, Israel, Singapore, those are the countries on the top of the list. Uh, among the states here, uh, you see Georgia is also on, uh, among the top uh, user of digital projects. Okay, for any, any uh, project, uh, we normally uh, develop a business case and it will be similar uh, in this case as well. Uh, you have to identify what is the value of having a digital twin. And then you have to convince people to buy in uh, your um, ideas and you have to show some quick wins. Uh, you have to decide what kind of digital twin you want. Uh, it is a process based, or it will have pipeline in it, or it will be about some kind of control. And what is your current uh, digital maturity? Um, and then who will be the user? Uh, who's going to use uh, in the long term? What are the expectations? What are the scale uh, you are going to have? So uh, as we have seen in the block diagram that the simulation model is a major component of the digital twin. So in order to develop a digital twin, you need to have a simulation model and it needs to be calibrated. So for the calibration part, uh, you need to have data and for uh, continuous data, you need to have flow, pressure, level measurements. Uh, then you have to define different um, 
operating conditions. For the dynamic event, uh, you need the pump speed, the valve position, and the gate positions as well. If you are doing a process uh, digital twin, then you will need water quality parameters as well. So I have been involved in a couple of projects. Uh, in a strict sense, they are not digital twins, but I'm calling them pre-digital twins. The reason being when I was involved in the project, uh, digital twin was still being debated and uh, it was not part of the water industry. So first example, I'm going to give you that uh, we developed simulation models for uh, water reclamation center. Uh, the purpose of this work was to study the impact of the collection system flows on treatment plant hydraulics. The plant uh, had 103 million gallon per day capacity. Uh, it is uh, an activated sludge treatment plant with tertiary filtration uh, with UV radiation. So we calibrated the model using flow, level, and depth data. As with any model, uh, you have to uh, select the right model element to mimic the process. So as you can see in this table uh, for bar screen, we use a screen link for uh, a primary clarifier, a storage node with weirds, uh, for tertiary filters, we use user-defined control with weirds and slewed gates and so on. So using uh, these model elements, uh, we were able to develop a kind of uh, simulation uh, model here uh, where um, you can uh, connect the uh, collection system model with the treatment plant model. As you can see that uh, you have the head work on the top and then primary clarifier, then BNR, biological nutrient removal units and secondary clarifiers, tertiary filter, and EU system. So in this project, we were able to predict what is going to happen during a storm event when you're receiving a lot of flow. And uh, that model is still there. And it can be upgraded to become a digital twin uh, if uh, utilities um, decide uh, to go to that route. The second uh, example I'm uh, presenting here is about simulating uh, an emergency outage. So this is a water treatment plant uh, and uh, the high service pump station um, is shown here um, in the uh, diagram. Uh, so, um, so we have to simulate the, um, the pump station's outage and what is the impact of that shutdown. So we uh, first calibrated the model using the scatter data. And then we shut down the pumps and look at the areas which will be impacted uh, due to uh, the outage and try to identify areas uh, which will have below uh, 20 PSI pressure. So using uh, this information, uh, we were able to develop um, a perimeter uh, uh, so that the um, boil water advisory can be issued for the customer. So this is the, the, the model is there. Uh, you can simulate the pump station outage. Now, if uh, we want to go to next level, we can use this model and uh, use continuous data and some kind of analytics to basically come up with uh, a digital twin. So uh, just to summarize uh, my presentation that uh, digital twin is a virtual or digital representation of the elements and dynamics of the plant or system. And we can say that simulation models are yesterday's digital twin. As we start moving our data from desktop to cloud, uh, the water system will have tons of data and it will be very difficult to do analysis using traditional software. So it may need uh, some kind of data analytics, um, machine learning or artificial intelligence. So uh, another way of defining digital twin is uh, basically you will have a simulation model 
uh, you will have real time calibration and some kind of analytics. So digital twin by itself is not a um, kind of software or tool, but it is an ecosystem of software and tools. So using uh, these analytics, uh, you can uh, find patterns and some hidden insight to make uh, informed and data-driven decisions. The expectation about your digital twin should be defined, what kind of scale you want, uh, why you want to go for digital twin, uh, do you have enough digital maturity uh, in your utility? So those are the questions uh, to be answered before you uh, go for a digital twin. Uh, it is definitely a multidisciplinary effort and it will require continuous calibration and regular updating. Uh, it can be used for flight simulator type of um, uh, exercise uh, where um, the training can be done and also it can be used to investigate things for future uh, projects. So digital twin uh, will improve the reliability it will reduce the capital and operating expenditures and provide customers with safe and efficient services. Uh, with this, uh, I conclude my presentation. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll wait for the question and answer session. Thank you again.